Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am building a testimonial section that is not just a slider, it is a behavior-driven experience. Every card feels alive. The moment I hover, the video reacts, the card gently breaks the stack and the rest of the layout fades into the background. Now I click and the entire layout transforms. The card flips, stretches, and moves to the center, turning into a full product story with real customer reviews and star ratings. In this project, you will learn how I control hover and click behavior using GSAP timelines, how I manage you, I state without messy logic, and how I build complex interactions that stay smooth and performance friendly. There are no fragile hover hacks. Everything is driven by clean animation logic. So every interaction feels intentional, premium, and smooth, exactly how modern product websites are meant to feel. Now let me explain the HTML structure behind this testimonial experience. I start with a scroll section at the top. This works as a visual intro before the interactive part begins. Then I move into the testimonial section. Inside it, I place a testimonial wrapper that holds the entire layout. At the top of this wrapper, I have a block called All Title. It contains three headings that animate independently, giving the section a strong visual identity. Below that, I have the pin box. This is the container that holds all the video cards. Each card has the class VD card. I also add small rotation classes like rotate minus 10 or rotate four, so the cards look naturally stacked instead of perfectly aligned. Inside every card, I place a muted looping video. This lets me show motion inside each testimonial without sound. On top of the video, I add a review layer. This layer holds the stars, the customer text, and a close button. It stays hidden until the card is activated. After all the cards, I place an explore button. This acts as a secondary interaction for users who want to see more. Finally, I close with another scroll section at the bottom, and I import GSAP, Scroll Trigger, Lenis, and my own script file to power all the interactions. Now let me explain how this testimonial layout is styled. First, I import the Boldance font and reset all margins, paddings, and box sizing so the layout stays predictable. On the body, I use a deep blue background with a layered grid texture. This gives the whole section a premium, editorial feel instead of a flat color. Every scroll section is full screen height and centered using flex. This creates strong visual breaks before and after the testimonial experience. The testimonial section itself is positioned relative and slightly taller than the viewport. This extra height gives room for the animations without clipping. The big titles are absolutely positioned in all title. I stretch them taller than the screen so they feel like a background layer behind the cards. Each heading is huge, uppercase, and slightly overlapping. I also use stroke and faded colors so the text feels like design texture, not content. The pin box is a horizontal flex container that holds all the video cards. I offset it from the left so the stack naturally flows across the screen. Every video card is a rounded white panel with Preserve 3D enabled. This allows me to rotate and flip the card later in the animation. On top of each card, I place a review layer. It starts rotated and invisible, with pointer events disabled so it never blocks interaction. When a card becomes active, I raise its Z-index and re-enable pointer events. This is how only the focused card becomes interactive. I also add subtle rotation classes like Rotate minus 10 or Rotate minus 4. These small tilts make the stack feel organic instead of perfectly straight. Finally, I style the Explore button at the bottom as a soft pill shape. This gives users a clear call to action after they explore the testimonials. Now let me start explaining the animation magic behind this section. First, I wait for the page to fully load using document add event listener with DOM content loaded. This makes sure all cards and titles exist before I animate anything. Then I register scroll trigger with GSAP. This lets me control animations based on scroll position. After that, I set up Lenis for smooth scrolling. I connect Lenis with scroll trigger so both stay perfectly in sync. Then I attach Lenis to the GSAP ticker. This means every frame of the animation is driven by GSAP's internal clock. Finally, I disable lag smoothing. This prevents sudden jumps when the browser tab loses focus, keeping the experience smooth and premium. Now I create the two timelines that drive the whole testimonial experience. The first timeline is called Test Timeline. It starts when the testimonials section enters the bottom of the screen and runs for a long scroll distance. This timeline is responsible for all the subtle background motion. I enable scrub here. So every animation progress is directly controlled by the scroll. Then I create a second timeline called Pin Timeline. This one pins the testimonial section in place. It starts when the section reaches near the top of the viewport and stays pinned for a long scroll range. 
This is what gives me time to play all the interactive card animations without the layout jumping away. Now I add one small but very powerful safety layer. This on update function runs every time the scroll animation updates. When the scroll progress reaches about 95%, I enable pointer events on all cards. That means only when the section is almost fully in view, the user can start interacting. Before that point, I disable pointer events completely. This prevents accidental hovers and clicks while the cards are still flying into place. So instead of fighting with weird bugs during scroll, I simply control when interaction is allowed. Now I start animating the cards and the big background titles. First, on the pin timeline, I move every video card up from far below the screen. I use Y% 300 so they slide in dramatically from the bottom, one after another with a stagger. This makes the stack feel like it is rising into place. Then on the testimonial timeline, I animate the three big titles in the background. I push the first title to the right and upward, the second title slightly to the right and upward, and the third title to the left and upward. All of them move together, creating that cinematic drifting typography effect behind the cards. Now I define the behavior states for the cards. I create a constant object called state. It has three modes, idle, hover, and active. Idle means nothing is happening. Hover means the user is just exploring a card. Active means the user has clicked a card and opened the full review view. Then I select all video cards and store them in all cards. I also create a variable called active card to remember which card is currently open. Now I prepare each card for interaction. I loop through all the cards one by one. For each card, I grab its video, its review layer, and the close button. Then I create a local state variable and set it to idle. This tells me that the card is doing nothing at the start. I also store the width and height of the card. These values are used later when I stretch and center the active card. Now I create the hover animation for each card. I build a GSAP timeline called Hover Timeline and keep it paused by default. This means it will only play when I manually trigger it. When the hover starts, I slightly push the card sideways. If the card is not the last one, I move it to the left. Otherwise, I move it to the right. This tiny shift makes the card feel like it is breaking out of the stack. Then I bring the card back to its original position. Increase its Z index and smooth everything with a gentle easing. Now I define what happens when I actually open a card. I create another paused timeline called Open Timeline. This is the animation that turns a simple card into a full product story. First, I push the card to the top of the stack by setting its Z index to 50. Then I move it slightly upward, scale its width and height, and rotate it on the Y axis by 180 degrees. This creates that flip and expand effect. At the same time, I fade in the review layer. The review text becomes visible just before the flip completes, making the transition feel seamless. Now I create the closing animation for the card. This timeline is also paused by default. It runs only when I click the close button. First, I fade out the review layer and add a little blur. This makes the text disappear softly instead of snapping away. Then I bring the card back to its original size and position. I reset its width, height, rotation, and vertical position so it slides perfectly back into the stack. At the very end, I run a small function. This resets the card state to idle, clears the active card, removes the active class, and unlocks the rest of the cards so the user can interact with them again. Now I wire the hover behavior for each card. When my mouse enters a card, I first check the state. If the card is not idle, I do nothing. If it is idle, I lock all the other cards so only this one reacts. Then I switch the state to hover, play the video, and restart the hover timeline. At the same time, I gently scale the card up which gives it that soft lift effect. When my mouse leaves the card, I check again that the card is still in hover mode. Then I reset the state to idle, unlock the other cards, pause the video, reverse the hover animation, and scale the card back down. This is how every hover feels responsive without breaking the stack. Now I connect the click behavior. When I click on a card, I first check if any card is already active. If yes, I block the action so only one card can be opened at a time. If no card is active, I lock all the other cards, switch the state to active, mark this card as the active one, and add the active class. Then I kill the hover animation and restart the open timeline. This is what flips and expands the card into the full review view. For closing, I listen for clicks on the close button. I stop the event from bubbling so it does not trigger the card click again. If the card is active, I run the close timeline, reverse the hover effect, pause the video, and finally reset the scale and stacking order. This is how the card cleanly opens and closes without breaking the layout. Now I control how the other cards behave when one card is in focus. I create a function called lock others. 
When I call it, I loop through all cards and fade out every card except the active one. I also blur them slightly and disable pointer events. This makes the background cards feel inactive and prevents accidental interaction. Then I create another function called unlock others. This does the opposite. It restores full opacity, removes the blur, and re-enables pointer events. This is how the layout returns to its normal interactive state after a card is closed. So now you have seen how this testimonial section becomes more than just a slider. I started with a stacked card layout, then added smooth scroll control, and finally layered hover and click behavior using clean GSAP timelines and simple state logic. You learned how each card reacts on hover, how it flips and expands into a full product story on click, and how the rest of the layout fades away to keep the focus exactly where it should be. This is not animation for decoration. This is behavior-driven UI, where every motion exists for a reason. If this video helped you understand how modern testimonial sections are really built, then it takes effort to make videos, and if you are liking my videos, press the like button and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to make more videos. I will be sharing more real-world UI behavior patterns very soon, so stay connected, keep experimenting, and I will see you in the next video.